Yeah, guys, so basically when I train biceps, I like to alternate between a short head bicep movement, so something like this that's kind of out in front of me, and then something like that would be like a long head bicep movement, so like a cable curl where I'm like the cable's behind me or like a preacher curl, something that gets a good stretch on the bicep. So you're gonna see a couple variations of both for a short head and long head bicep today. I like that high preacher curl on the other side. Do you like those ones? <laughs> they fuck with my, they really fuck with my bicep tendon. On okay, side. no, you won't do that. I'm gonna, I like that Panada like overhead tricep up there. Overhead, <laughs> that one fucks with my elbows. Oh, does it? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm loving the supersets today. It's a quicker pace than what I was normally accustomed to. Just kind of doing one thing at a time, slower pace. This is great because we're getting blood all around that muscle. Both the muscles, all the muscles, biceps, triceps, brachialis, forearms, fucking pumped. <laughs> so if you guys want to maximize your time in the gym, put some supersets together or giant sets together and you're not resting, you're just going back and forth. And it's great if you have a partner, you can just keep switching back and forth. So that way, the action is. You know what, I used to not like this one because I was always focused on like trying to compact my shoulder down. And so a lot of people are always like shoulders down and back. But on triceps, if you really want to get this long head, think about the opposite. So I'm trying to push my shoulder up and out as I'm doing this. So as I'm going down, my, my hand and the weight's going behind me, but my shoulder and my elbow's going up in front of me. And that's going to really stretch out your tricep more. And if you have elbow pain when you do overhead tricep work, that's probably why. So give that a try guys, give that a try. Big arm day. The only logical thing we can do now is go and fill up our arms with some sushi. Yeah. So. What else will we do? Yeah. So, I'm thinking at least 50 to 60 pieces. 
and then see where the night takes us. Yeah, good idea. I like I like how I like where you went with that. Like there could be more food after. I like that. What did it say? Send. Let's go. They brought this first. So. Yeah. This is Robin's order, the clean stuff. First mission. The dirty stuff's coming soon. Don't worry. <laughs> the clean stuff's coming. That's my order. I still got to need one of these. Those are fucking sorry. Team clean versus team dirty. <laughs> I have, I have, I'm definitely team dirty. <laughs> the, the villain would eat dirty. Oh, ab <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, just doesn't give a shit. Just like, yeah, whatever. Great genetics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything's easy for me. <laughs> That's not true. We know exactly what we got to do to progress. It's just putting in the work day in and day out. Like, who can rack up the most days? That's who's going to get there first. You know what I mean? Why do you like this school? Because it's like, I don't know about you, but I think it's cool because you think about it from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. And even like dreaming about it half the time, too. And there's like, it's. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I want to escape from bodybuilding because I never get a break from it. But then I remember that it's actually the only thing I ever wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, that's why. It's like, it encompasses my whole life because I wanted that. <laughs> like, I decided that shit. So when I wanted an escape, I'm like, why do I want to escape from the life that I already wanted in the first place? So then that, like, that helps to reassure me that I'm on the right path, right? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have those conversations with yourself sometimes. Like, like, hey, wake the fuck up, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's really nothing to be depressed about when you're doing the stuff that you wanted to do. It's like, if you're not happy with it, then you can just choose to do something else. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, when, you know, I was having a conversation with Valerie uh, this morning about this. Because like, we were just kind of talking about, like, you know, just the whole thing is tough. Even, like, social media is tough. Like, all this stuff, right? But then, like I said to her, I was like, I was like, well, is there anything else you'd rather be doing? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm like, we could be getting up and go to a factory every day. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, but anything you do long enough, it's gonna feel like work sometimes. It's gonna be hard, but like, yeah, to be in this situation and like to be like, cause we, like you said, we're like 18, 19 years old. We're like, we want to be a pro, we'll do whatever it takes to get there. We did it. Now we're here. It's like we can't slack now. You know? It's like, you know, it's like. Uh, you ever watch that like Eric Thomas like motivational video? Yeah. 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 You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? And he's like, you guys are like literally here now, like talking about all these like pro athletes or like Division One athletes, and it's like now you're gonna let off the gas, like right when you finally got to where you want to be, be better. But this is when we got to like, give it everything. But it's gonna take the most out of us because we've already given so much. Like that's that's really like a struggle I have. Like I'm like, like I have days where I'm like, it's like I know what it took to get here, and it's like now that I'm in the pros, it's like I see how advanced the physiques are to mine. And like you can then like because we can actually fathom like the work, and it's like it's almost daunting. You're almost just like. Man, I got like a good few hard off seasons ahead of me. Like I gotta do a few more shows, work my way up. Like it's a road. Like you know what I mean? So you're only getting there if you like fucking want it. Like really want it, right? It's it's amazing to me thinking about like if you can go back and imagine all the people that you started, kind of like your peers and rivals at the time that you started. How many people? out of that are still going. It's like a small percentage, very small. For me, it's like, I remember there was like a couple of guys. When I was competing, I'm like, oh, I got into the nationals. Who are the guys that are here? It was like, or who are the guys that are still here? It's only like Joe Seaman, Regan, and like Seabum. Everybody else, they've stopped at some point. They, they got to a certain point and then they called it quits. Like, and that's like the difference in like the passion. like. Like a real passion. It's like, like I couldn't stop bodybuilding if I tried. Like, it will just, it just is who I am. I just have to go to the gym. I have to eat a certain way. Like, I just, there's no, and I get it. Like, some people, like, this could sound bad or like a bit extreme. But some people get like married and have kids, and like that takes pressure. That, but like, I'm so infatuated by bodybuilding still. Like, I'm not even entertaining the, those things as options right now because. I know if I was in that situation, I like, guess that would have a big problem, obviously, but that's why I'm not letting it happen, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, I, I need to keep my focus here, like, you know what I mean? Because this is what I want, you know? Saying that, though, have you guys thought about what comes after? No, like, it's... I mean, I think we're both conscious of, like, putting ourselves, like... 
you know, monetizing our, ourselves really like, pretty well. Like, we're already doing that, and I think we're already kind of doing things that are going to carry on past bodybuilding in terms of like coaching and being able to produce content, like knowledgeable content that, that is valuable, right? Uh, so I think like we're already kind of setting ourselves up because we know that we have to do that, right? And and as long as we stay focused and better ourselves in our bodybuilding career, those other things are going to continue to build as well, like our brand. So. What are who are some of the guys that you look up to in regards to that? Is it Jay Cutler? Is it Jay, Jay's always like Jay? Jay is gonna be the standard in terms of like the pinnacle of like bodybuilding achievement. He's kind of done everything. It's like the Arnold Schwarzenegger effect carried into like now. This is like the businessman's kind of like he's Arnold is older, so we don't necessarily look up to him like we do with Jay Cutler. We see like Jay Cutler as the guy to emulate. I think he's done everything perfectly because he has his health. He has his Olympia titles. He has his Arnold titles. He has his businesses. He's got his wife. He's got his life. You know what I mean? But, but I think the most important thing with Jay is that he has his health. So nothing else really matters that much after bodybuilding if you're not healthy because your quality of life goes down drastically, right? It's like, as much as we all love Ronnie Coleman and we really appreciate his dedication and how far he's pushed himself to the point of like just being broken to bits, but I don't think any of us want that because we still wanna have this quality of life after. So what comes after bodybuilding? It's like half of it is gonna be for us to find out it's right now it's like we don't know the other half is we know it's going to still be related to bodybuilding in some way related to fitness related to for me probably going off in the direction of helping people like fix their bodies because i've always been fascinated by that but that's still like bodybuilding it's like putting back together our bodies which is what we have to do constantly anyways so back to the food. Yeah, what do you got there? What so I had some of these tacos. So there was like a shrimp tempura taco that sucked. Then I had a spicy salmon taco, which was good. Uh, just polish that off. Pork dumplings. And I can't remember what these are. We're moving on up now. What you get? We're, we're getting into that dirty stuff right now. Salmon and avocado, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Asano Sushi had the macro sushi, um, but they do have a gluten-free thing here, which is cool, so that's nice. But I think the selection is a little bit lower than what we're used to, but still good quality, so give it a 9 out of 10 for sure. And we're at August 8th, which is a weird name for a sushi place, but today is August 8th, so... Is it the only day you could come here? I asked him, I was like, is there any deals on? And he's like, like for August 8th, and he was like, is your birthday? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, do you have your ID? I was like, no, I forgot it at home. And he was like, it's not your birthday. Uh, <laughs> I was like, you got me. Watch <laughs> <laughs> it. What's this, Mom? Uh, we have uh, Red Dragon Roll, which is dynamite roll, so like uh, tempura, shrimp, and then uh, salmon on top. I think I have a spicy butterfish roll, a spicy salmon roll, and a salmon avocado roll. So we're doing okay. 